I'm calling this meeting of the this regular meeting of the town council finance committee to, together to order. President are myself, uh, Councilor Ingalls, Councilor McGratton, Steve Holyfield, John Mann, Mayor Allen. Uh, is that missing anybody? No, I don't think so. Um, hi, Steve. Welcome. And with that, I will ask for a motion to, oh, um, are there any citizens' comments? Hearing and seeing none, I will ask for a motion to review and approve the prior meeting minutes. I move to approve the regular meeting minutes of October 21st, 2020. Councilor Psalm seconds. Any comments, changes, corrections? None from me. Okay. All in favor? Say aye. Aye. Councilor Ingalls votes aye. So does Councilor Psalm's motion passes. Oh, and I should have mentioned uh, Tom Malone is working two time zones away. He said his attendance would be spotty tonight, and I don't see him, so I assume he's not able to attend. So, um, Fred, are we expecting Marsha tonight? I, I uh, no, actually we're not. I, I forgot she is actually on vacation this week. Oh, she is, okay, all right. Um, so I can't remember if I said the motion carries, but the motion to approve the minutes carries. Um, and give me a second, I've got to fix the roll call with Tom. And now maybe that gives you well, I'll do that later. Okay, so we need to move on. Um, under old business, I have nothing on the property tax exemption because uh, I did attend, I think several of us attended the um, land use planning meeting and they have not taken action. They may at their next meeting. So nothing on item one. Item two, uh, continued discussion on the Ledyard Housing Authority pilot and mayor, I think you have an update for us. Okay, so I'll give you a quick rundown on that. As you know, um, uh, there was a an ask to reduce pilot. Uh, in the meantime, we submitted uh, the grant application to uh, Department of Housing and CHFA for the CD, CDBG grant, uh, which was one point, just about one point four million dollars. Um, had a really great conversation with CHFA. Uh, and then ultimately they called us back to a meeting with a larger group of people from the Department of Housing and CHFA. And uh, they said that they wanted to uh, increase, would we consider accepting an extra million dollar grant to further improve Kings Corner Manor? So uh, we very much said, yes, we would love that. This place has been in a state of neglect for far too long. So it is it is by no means a guarantee, but one of the things that came up was uh, in-kind uh, offerings coming from the town. And I had said, well, there was a proposal to um, actually reduce the pilot payment to the town. And I said, would that would that please CHFA and Department of Housing and and kind of help make this, this in, added $2.5 million grant look even better? And they overwhelmingly said absolutely. So um, what I think what I think you need to be prepared for is uh, amending the ordinance to from ten percent to seven percent. Um, they are perfectly fine with us saying the understanding is that the reduction shall be placed in a, in their account. So it's kind of like we're directing them to to put the money aside for uh, future capital needs. Uh, but we don't hold it. So um, that's kind of where we are. Uh, the extra million dollar grant, they're looking at doing uh, siding, kitchens, call buttons from each unit, um, much needed sidewalks, driveway, and then some improvements to the community building. So overall, a really, really great project. I'm, I'm very hopeful that we'll get the extra million dollars. 
and uh, we'll all be down there to cut a ribbon. That'd be awesome. awesome. May yeah, I have a question? Sure. Um, on the we um, we saw a breakdown of similar pilot payments from other towns, and some some were lower, but also those towns were not providing the level of services. For example, maybe the town wasn't providing the snow plowing um, and some other maintenance um, services. Uh, Ledyard is what you know. We're plowing over there at least that much. I saw. I, I can't. Uh, yeah. I don't have it in front of me. Anyway, so, can you speak to yeah. that? I, yeah, I can. So, so what we what we have been doing, and it was kind of a, a, a you know an off the cuff agreement, but the town agreed that in in heavy storms, or public works agreed that in hev the heaviest of snowstorms, they would make two passes through there. Um, really strictly to ensure emergency vehicle access for the residents or the or the buildings, not to do a full plowing job. Okay. Um, we do not collect trash there. They do their own trash pickup. So really for us, what it comes down to is emergency services and some selective plowing. Um, what I have been uh, working on is trying to convey that that the town really does not have any responsibility um, for the housing authority. So even though we do do that limited amount of plowing, um, you know, don't ask us for more because we're we're supposed to be in two separate silos. So we're trying to maintain that. Uh, so yes, I agree with you. The when you looked at the spreadsheet, there was quite a, a, a range of the percentages and also some of those with lower percentages also had 100 plus units of housing. So they had a much larger uh, rent pool that, you know, 7% of a larger rent pool is a lot more than our 10% or 30 units. Right. But, but uh, that being said, if all this work gets done and rents continue to increase at Kings Corner Manor, which they should, the 7% is probably going to come closer to being the, the current 10% based on uh, rents that are more in line with where they should be. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Councillor Ingalls. So here's what I'm gonna suggest. Um, both Steve Holyfield and I have meetings that we have to leave for. So I'm planning to leave at um, 545 this evening and I can't avoid that. So our our plan is to get to R11, which is the first item on new business. And if we have time after we do new business, we'll come back to this and maybe we can entertain a motion. Sound okay? Sure. Yeah, okay. and it, just just and so we're not you're in a aware, hurry. Correct. Uh -huh. Just so you're aware, this doesn't have to be moved on um, right away. So just so you know. Okay. Yeah, but we don't want to miss the opportunity either while while it's out there. Okay, is there any other old business? Hearing none, is there a motion to agenda, uh, a motion to amend the agenda under new business? <clears throat> Hearing none, um, I make a motion to approve the expenditure of $126,629.63 to the penny from account number 210-2040-54325 fire apparatus CNR for the purchase and installation of a new motor in Ledger Fire Engine R11, including a bid waiver granted to Bulldog Fire Apparatus of Bosler, Connecticut to perform the work. Councillor Ingalls seconds. Thank you. Um, I'll give a brief overview of what's happening only because uh, Mr. Holyfield called me earlier this week to tell me what's happening and then I will turn it over to him. Uh, the summary is we have not been able to sell this unit. This is, this is the engine that suffered the EGR cooler failure. Um, we had decided we would try and sell it for approximately $200,000. And if not, then we'll hang on to it. Um, what has happened is we've got another problem with the engine. This time it's the engine itself or appears to be. Um, and it looks like we're going to have to replace that motor. We considered other options. One of them was um, installing a different motor and I think there was unanimous advice not to do that because you never know what you get into when you put a, um, a new engine into a, into a vehicle that wasn't engineered for that engine. 
there are all kinds of connections and engineering issues that you run into. So we're faced with, if we want to keep this thing running, um, we're going to have to keep it and we're going to have to replace the engine. I'll let Mr. Holyfield expand on that. Um, but the, the sense of urgency is that um, this vehicle is out of service now because of the issue that was found. And we're once again relying on the very fortunate purchase of the Green Goblin um, to provide us with <laughs> service in the meantime. So we need to get moving on this and do something. Um, the option is purchase a new fire engine, which uh, I don't think any of us want to do. So with that, I'll turn it over to Steve. Hi, everyone. Um, I think you pretty well hit the background stuff um, very well on that. Um, Essentially, what happened, and, and everybody knows the history behind this, we had a problem with the oil cooler and the EGR cooler back in March of 2019. The apparatus was out of service through December-ish of 2019. Uh, we got it back in service. Um, we approached the Finance Committee and the Council, which was passed in sometime in February, um, to market this apparatus, as Councillor Soms mentioned, to try to sell it um, and and buy a different apparatus. Um, during that time, we found that the um, essentially the process of what they call brokering the apparatus uh, was not likely to get us what we were looking for on our on our um, you know ground floor pricing. And we had one vendor that was strongly considering replacing and putting a new motor into um, that apparatus, but. Um, in the course of them trying to evaluate this, trying to get all the engineering stuff from Ferrera, who's the parent company that the manufacturer of this, um, I was approached by the career staff in sometime in August, and they said, "Hey, we've had to add coolant to this a few times. Uh, the coolant's low. There's something wrong with the apparatus." We immediately, with John Mann's uh, Chief Mann's um, approval, took it out of service. Started looking at it. We contacted a local Ferrera vendor who uh, is Bulldog Fire Apparatus. That's the authorized repairer of the apparatus now. Um, they came down and took an oil sample, which we anticipated probably was going to have coolant in the oil. When we got it back, shockingly, we didn't find any coolant in the oil, but we found aluminum in the oil. Um, it was about five times the acceptable levels. And we found out that aluminum uh, in the oil is typically indicative of premature bearing wear. Uh, so what we believe happened is that when we had the EGR problem uh, a year ago, there was coolant in the oil. It caused some premature bearing wear. We've got some excessive wear in this motor. Um, our options right now are basically to start tearing the motor down at an unknown cost, uh, an unknown out of service time, and kind of go on a hunt to find out what's wrong with it, which we don't believe is palatable because it doesn't fix the problem with this Navistar motor in the long run. Um, so what we arrived at was this quote for um, Bulldog, and it should be in your agenda packets for the 126, uh, 629. We also received one from Bout and Fire Apparatus, who's a vendor that Chief Man likes to use. It was slightly higher at 132. And uh, Hein Brothers International, who's the vendor that worked on this apparatus prior, had entertained the idea of trying to submit a quote. And then they called me uh, about a week or two ago and said, no, we don't want to do the work. Um, some background on it. We do have all the engineering uh, stuff from Ferrera Fire Apparatus. It's been given to Bulldog. That's how they came up with the parts list and arrived at this number. It's several hundred hours of labor, um, but they did actually give us a pretty substantial break on the labor rate. So I'm comfortable with that, and I'm comfortable with uh, them being able to tackle this. Uh, the mechanic that is the lead mechanic at Bulldog, uh, has done a couple of these motor replacements before. He feels very confident with it, and we will have a warranty. I believe it's a five-year warranty on Cummins uh, engines following the completion of this. So there is some, some standing behind this repair, which is good. I'm very pleased with that. Um, very comfortable with the vendor doing the work as well. Um, and to a point, there was some... Oh, uh, we actually, also in your agenda packets, the mayor had asked me to run kind of the numbers on what this would do to our apparatus replacement stuff. Um, and so circled in a, in a dark line box on both of those is the 126, 630 uh, estimate. And then we extended the lifespan of this apparatus back out to its original date of fiscal year 33 for replacement. And we also uh, attempted to go to fiscal year 36. And surprisingly, I, I figured it was gonna have a, a better set of numbers keeping it to 36, but it actually, uh, our total budget at the end of fiscal year 36 was lower by um, replacing it but you know at any rate this gets us another 
10 to 13 years, 15 years of service out of this apparatus. Chief Man's in favor of now keeping it. Um, we're having some discussions about how we can use this apparatus a little bit better, maybe put some rescue equipment on it or, or do something with it so that it, it's going to be something that is well used and well cared for and um, of good service to the town and to the residents of the community uh, moving forward with us. So, um, Mr. Mayor, did you have anything to add to, to that? No, I think you covered it really well, Steve. I mean, the, the idea was that the, the max force engine we have, uh, you know, we, we tried to dance with it. We got about what 20 hours of runtime maybe yeah. before it's, uh, heading towards failure again. So, um, this was one of the options that we had a while ago and we went with the repair, which I think we had to try. And, uh, now we're back for option number two. We actually took a gamble that the the um, coolant getting in the oil wouldn't do any or didn't do any damage. And even though it's not showing up this time, that means there's another problem, probably up in the head area. But uh, it also appears that some more serious damage was done and, and we took the risk and we lost on that. Um, two, 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 two quick I'm points that. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, two quick points to add. Sorry. Um, one is that we we don't know what's wrong with this. And, you know, I even evaluated and discussed with the people that did the repair. And I said, hey, could it be your repair? And they said, probably not. And they they wouldn't come out and say they think it's deeper in the motor. But that's what we pieced together and talking with a couple of mechanics is, you know, coolant only goes three places. It goes on the ground, it goes in the oil, and it goes out the exhaust pipe. And we know it's not in the oil, and it definitely wasn't on the ground. So it's got to be going out the exhaust pipe. And and that's a pretty critical thing to start digging around and finding. And I think at best, it's right. a gamble. And, you know, it, we could be up in the, I don't want to ballpark numbers, but significantly more than 15,000 to start tearing this motor apart to find out what's wrong with it. And it's, and it's, it's an inherently problematic engine with this engineering. And could you comment, Steve, on the engine that will replace it? Is that, is there any form of, of an upgrade or improvement in the new engine to the old problem? Yeah. It's yes. So it's going to have the diesel exhaust fluid, which is the uh, its latest EPA standards. Uh, it's the same thing that we have on the ladder truck in Gales Ferry. It's it's a different motor. It's a smaller motor than the, than on the ladder truck because it doesn't need as much power. It's a lot lighter of, a, of an apparatus. But you know, Cummins are very reliable. It's going to have not have this EGR cooler and engine oil cooler on it. It's going to have. Um, you know, and that goes back to the 2013 diesel standards. That's a lot of the reason why this rig was purchased with this motor on it was the the folks that made the decision at that point really felt that uh, the diesel exhaust fluid and, and the upgraded um, catalysts were a, a gamble. It was new technology at that point. And so they wanted to stick with something that was a little bit more reliable. And just unfortunately, we wound up having a, a manufacturer that wasn't producing something very reliable. And we all know the history with you know, as Councilor Malone had brought up, brought up the last time with Boston having several of these apparatus and, and several other fire departments having issues with this particular motor. Um, and, you know, on a personal note, it's also been in RVs as well, because I happen to have a, a, a relative that had an RV that had a max force motor in it, and, and he had the exact same problems with this as well. So um, it's, it's not really unique to the fire service, but it's something that's a problem with that uh, international motor. We also had conversations back then about our chances of uh, getting any money back from Cummins or Ferrara. And there are so many, not, not so much Ferrara, but there are so many fleets that are having the same problem that we would be very far down the list in line. And we can't really wait around uh, trying to pin our hopes on a, on a lawsuit. Um, exactly. So, so we're, we're kind of out of options. Just a quick clarification. This this the failed engine was a Max Force by Navistar. The replacement is Cummings. Yes. Oh, it is. Oh, yep. so it's a different engine. So yep, what, it's what a about total the engineering issue. Pardon me? The 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 engineering has been looked at and it and it took several months for Ferrera to come back and give us an itemized list of what we would need for wiring harnesses, cross members, you know, because it's a different oh, okay. motor. And they've yeah. done that, and they feel pretty confident with that. Um, and that was that was a huge step to get Ferrer to actually talk with us. Um, and there had been a bit of a cold shoulder with this apparatus when it had, had the Navistar motor. And, and luckily, mm -hmm. we've got a vendor locally now 
Um, you know, Shipman's used to be the one that dealt with Ferrera, then it was specialty vehicles, and now it's Bulldog. And it seems like Bulldog has the right people in place to be able to contact Ferrera, get what they need from the engineers, and get the project rolling. So it's, it's actually kind of exciting okay. to finally have an answer on that. Okay, so that explains the, the re-engineered mount. So, um, so I'll take back what I said about uh, not wanting to take a risk, but it's does sound like the risk is reduced and that Ferrara did the engineering as opposed to a shop doing the engineering to, to you know, retrofit a, a different engine into the vehicle. That's exactly. Still, yeah. still a risk though, but uh, less of one. St still a risk, but I, I get the sense from this particular vendor that there is follow through on it. There is buy-in. They do want to make this work for us. Um, and like yeah. I said, we have that, we have that warranty um, that'll be tacked on for the new motor going into this. So uh, I'm fairly comfortable with this in terms of them actually pulling this off and having this successful and then it's serving the town's needs for the next, you know, 15, 16 years. Good. Okay. Other questions, Councilor Ingalls? No. Comments? Okay. Ready to vote? I'm ready to vote. All in favor, say aye. Councilor Ingalls votes aye. Councilor Saunders votes aye. And I will entertain the motion passes. I would entertain a motion on the next item, please. I make a motion to create an agricultural lands preservation account as account number 21090305-58923 and to appropriate $1,000 to it from the open space account number 21090305-58920 as seed money. Um, so this is something that came up uh, as a result of the Ag Commission, um, I believe, and the request is to start to set money aside uh, for them to preserve agricultural lands. This is a nice way to do it. We do have an open space account with, with in, in it, um, and this is to take a small amount of it, uh, of what's in that account, and get the, the Ag Lands Preservation Account started. Uh, we've had a lot of success in the past with accounts like this for the purchase of or, or preservation of open space, and this is another good idea. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, does uh, Mayor, do you have anything to add to this? Or uh, just just we we currently have just over one hundred and sixty thousand dollars in the open space fund, so um, we're in pretty good shape financially there. Uh, the, the real estate transactions continue to feed money into that. And uh, most likely we will be hearing from for another proposal to uh, partner with Avalonia or somebody similar on some additional acquisitions. But I think so far we've done well and we're still in good shape on that fund. So certainly a thousand dollars coming out of there is not an issue. Very good. Councilor Ingalls, questions? So, so the money in this fund is um, they they're going to need funds to work with in partnering with the state over different programs to to preserve for some of our agricultural lands. That's correct. Yes. Okay. And um, so right now, we're the open the money that's in the open space fund comes from transfer of property. Right. So right? 40, yeah, forty percent of the conveyance. Um, money goes in there. Okay. So how will um, this particular fund increase? Oh, yeah. So in the future, I think that um, the it may be a consideration of the town council and finance committee to consider uh, allocating dollars that go into the open space fund into this fund if their intent is to become buyers of agricultural lands. Okay. It's just that, you know, it's it's going to take a haul. I'm hoping that what they're really yeah. looking for is to have some money in there to maybe do some match funds. Uh, I that's think that's I their doing. intent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So so those are the ideas that are at least on the table. As it's stated, this is seed money. We're, we're starting the fund and um, we can, you know, options for increasing it will be explored. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. 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 Okay, ready to vote? Yes, sir. All in favor, say aye. Councilor Ingalls votes aye. 
As it says, Councilor Song, the motion passes. passes. Thank you. Um, we have some time. It's 525. We have about exactly 20 minutes. We could go back and take action on the Housing Authority if you guys want to. I have a question on the uh, proposed ordinance. Um, you mentioned 7% um, for pilot, but you weren't very emphatic about that other 3% going into their stiff account. Or at least I didn't read uh, it to be that. Right, right. Yeah, so Councilor McGretton, that's a good question. The, um, the, the information we got back from um, CHFA is that we really can't do that. We have to have an agreement. We can't write an ordinance that says we're going to reduce your pilot and the money has to go into this account. They have to agree to that. Okay. Um, and and also, um, if if we really, I mean, CHFA liked the idea. They absolutely loved the idea. It sounds like mm -hmm. of us reducing the pilot as our means of of in kind services. So rather than provide services, we just reduce the pilot, um, and it goes. So so we don't get as much revenue. They don't pay as much, but then they get this million dollar grant from. CHFA. Right, but they're so far behind. Not through anybody. Not through any of the present people's fault. But they need to really build up, um, you know, a capital account. So, um, and, and I'm sure they're going to do it. But, you know, mm -hmm. you got to look down the road. There'll be other people yes. on the authority and and other executive directors that the emphasis the emphasis is there that that three percent go into their I'll call it savings account. Right. Yeah, and I, I think that um, you know you can certainly ask that uh, they're kind of counting on management to do the right thing and uh, one of the things that's going to happen is if if the if the full two and a half million dollars comes in mm -hmm. it's going to be such a comprehensive update to the facilities mm -hmm. um, they shouldn't have a lot of uh, immediate capital uh, substantial capital needs Right. So it should allow them an opportunity to start building that fund like they should have many years ago. Right, right. Uh, so, so what CHFA had said was their feeling was that with this project, they would expect 20 years from now is when we would be faced with something substantial because roofs have already been done, um, mm -hmm. windows, uh, doors are going to be done, heating and cooling systems will be done. Uh, some bathrooms have been done. The rest of the bathrooms will be done. There's a whole lot of stuff. Right. So, but I, I agree. I think it, um, I would like to see, you know, Apple was very sensitive about, uh, I think specifically when I talked to them, they didn't want us holding the money. They didn't want the town of Ledger holding the 3%. That was kind sure. of the crux of the story. But I think it could probably be said in the ordinance that, um, you know, you could say that those funds shall be directed to your capital account. Right, right. Some way, yeah. it doesn't say it now, but some way to ensure that it gets yeah. done. And, and then the other piece of it, too, is I'm going to try to keep a tight leash on on them in terms of, you know, please don't call public works for service down there because we're not involved. And that's that's the hardest part to to convey is that it seems like it's a town property, but it's right. really not. Right, right, yeah. 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 So, so, Mayor. Uh, I have a question. Go, go ahead, Andre. Either Sorry. one. Sorry. Sorry, Bill. <laughs> Would it be permissible for some of the grant funds to be tucked into a capital account, or would there be a requirement that those funds be immediately expended? The, the grant funds have to be 100% used on the project okay. and any, okay. any penny that isn't used goes back to them for their next grant okay. cycle. So we All can't right. retain anything beyond what we want to do. It, it makes sense. I just thought it was worth yeah. asking. <laughs> yeah. And, and, no, they're and not again, giving us money to pocket, a, you know, put stuck in the savings account. Right. And again, with the, you know, it's funny that, you know, the, uh, they, they say that we're standalone and the, the housing authority standalone. But when it comes time to administer the grant and the funds, they expect <laughs> the town to be doing that. Yes. 
So uh, Liz, the uh, the planner has been very busy on this, and I have said to Chaffa too that I would like to assign some of her hours hours spent on this grant application as part of our in kind for what we're providing for them. Right. And uh, yeah. they they there they kind of gave me a, a, a some semi warm welcome on that one. <laughs> okay. So um, I have a question for Roxanne. Um, I'm looking through the attachments. Did you say that you had taken out the optional um, pilot provision, setting aside money? Right. Well, yeah, well, actually, um, with the email that you and the mayor and I had um, back and forth like a week ago, you had indicated, the mayor had indicated that we couldn't put any strings attached. So in yep. the um, agreement, I actually took that language out, but what it had said was, um, and I'll read you just that paragraph and I can restore it if you want it that way. So it's, it's, it's an appendix to the ordinance. So it's a separate agreement and it's an agreement that we would ask the housing authority to also vote on. And that language said, um, now therefore be it resolved that the municipality amends and will accept payment in lieu of taxes from the housing authority of the town of Ledger for the project, which was the original project number 072HE169 at a total rate of 7% of the net shelter rent per annum with 3% of, with 3% to be allocated as such to the housing authority short term investment fund for capital mm -hmm. imp uh, improvements to maintain the King's Corner Manor facility. So it's not coming to the town. It would go directly to, the, we're asking them to put it directly into their SIF account. So if you want, I can restore that language, but I had what's online tonight. I had removed it based on that uh, email we had a week no. ago. Yep. Okay. Okay. It's whatever you yeah, have I, reference with. I think it's worth, I think it's worth trying it that way with the in, uh, language in there. I okay. mean, we do, we do Wait. want them to be financially self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Mayor, I mean, do, you, not, do you want to? It's, it's in an agreement. Yep. The ordinance. So, so Mayor, do you, do you want to talk to CHFIA before we take action on this? Because I, I wouldn't want us to go down a path that they would not be happy with. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I can. I can. It's easy for me to pick up the phone, talk to them tomorrow, and just say, "Here's what the finance committee is thinking. Are you comfortable with this?" Before we have Roxanne yeah. put it back in, and if they are. Ox can amend it once again, and then yep. we're off and running. Yeah, that's fine. Yep. Okay. But to be clear, this is going in an agreement. Sorry. Go ahead. To be clear, this part, this language is not going in the ordinance. This is going into an agreement. That's correct. Right. We don't have the authority to put this in the ordinance. Is that? Am I understanding right. that correctly? Okay. Right. Yeah. Right. I was at their meeting last night and they're aware that this is coming. Okay. The, the amendment to the ordinance basically just says, um, you know, it addresses payment in lieu of taxes. So, and it says in accordance with the state statute, we can uh, implement payment in lieu of taxes. And then it gives an optional tax abatement pilot provision, which is also provided in state statute. And it says that that would be done via the appendix agreement right. so that that is outside of the ordinance and the ordinance the language in the ordinance just gives us the authority to make this agreement because when the pilot program was first implemented it was done via a resolution back in 1986 as you guys have seen and to try and find those resolutions are you know Difficult. So if we just put it into this ordinance as state statute now asks us to do, because state statutes do change over the years, um, it's in one tidy place. It's in an ordinance and the appendix is part of it as we just did with all those land use. All right. Okay. So let's let's see how the mayor's conversation turns out. And if they're in agreement, if they like that idea, great, we'll do it, or at least consider doing it. And if not, then we'll will uh, just do the ordinance without the agreement. I, I Bill, I just, I don't foresee there being an issue with um, making it an actionable item at your next meeting. I will make sure that's ready. All right, great, okay. Right, and we could Excellent. still have the agreement 
So we just would take out that part, the wording that says 3% is going to go into the stiff. So the agreement Correct. would still be required because that's where we're stating what, what their pilot payment is going to be. Correct. Right. Okay. Is there any other business to come before the committee? Hearing none, uh, we are adjourned without exception at 5.35 p.m. Thank you all very Excellent. much. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Great job. Have a good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.